Hey, what's up everybody? This is Graham. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I want to give you tip number 10 in my series that I've been doing on breathing and air and also recap for those of you who might have missed the first nine of those. And the reason for that is some of these are on Instagram and some of them are on YouTube. So I'm kind of just doing this video to bring everything up to speed, particularly for YouTube. So stick around to the end of the video so you can get tip number 10. But let's go back in time a little bit and recap the tip so far. All right, so tip number one was blowing through your lead pipe, just removing your mouthpiece and blowing fairly vigorously through the lead pipe. And you can do that before playing exercises, warm ups, pieces of music, what have you. Very, very helpful tip. Tip number two was taking your mouthpiece off and blowing through the back side of it. And you get that nice sort of seal feeling as you're blowing through the back side of the mouthpiece. You can also do that with the straw. Both are great tips. Number three was accepting your feelings and realizing that our breathing is very much connected to our sort of emotional state. And if you're feeling a certain way, it's often better to accept the feelings than to try to fight them, particularly if you're feeling like really high or really low. You wanna find that nice sort of balanced middle place. It's your body's gonna be much more at ease like that. Number four was getting to the neutral point. So that kind of leads into that. And the neutral point is that place where you're neither inhaling or exhaling. You can find that through panting. And I showed that on that Instagram video. Number five, was a little bit of a cleaning video where I blew water through the trumpet. Through the act of blowing, you actually get a nice little air workout and you get your trumpet clean, so nice bonus there. Tip number six was the Torbjorn Holtmark method where he simply suggests to do one thing before you play each day. You decide what that is, what is the most beneficial for you. Number seven was tossing the ball and something that I learned at the Stockholm Chamber Brass Academy where you just throw the ball up in the air and then as the ball is coming down, to kind of let the timing go with more of a visual cue. Number eight, I talked about Chickowitz and the wind patterns, the super useful wind patterns where you simplify your playing in a much more direct way, not related maybe to thinking about the intervals as vertical, but more of a horizontal line. And then yesterday's tip was when I blew a little bit of the post horn solo from Mahler's Third Symphony into the jug of water right over here and how that was inspired by Reinhold Friedrich's video. I don't know how serious that was, but someone did reply to me saying that Bill Adams had students actually do that. So I didn't know that. And anyway, so that was, that's bringing you everyone up to speed so far. Thank you so much for uh, those of you who have been watching these videos and please give this a thumbs up if you're into this kind of stuff and you appreciate these kind of tips. So here we go. Let's get into the last tip for today, which is tip number 10. Tip number 10 is to play with conviction. And I think that really relates to air for a lot of reasons. When you play with conviction, you are really dedicating yourself. You are nothing stopping you to play whatever it is you need to play and it's really helpful to think about that for certain excerpts and I want to play some for you so you get an idea of what I mean. Like I think about for instance the little fanfare at the beginning of the last movement of Sibelius 2. I think about Ein Heldenleben. I think about the Ravel Piano Concerto. There's literally probably a hundred just in the classical world if not more and then I'm sure jazz players can think of their own. Playing with conviction with your air is just you're, you're just in it and there's nothing nothing's gonna stop you. And it could be tricky to get to that mindset, but it's worth practicing. And even though it's not directly about how to do air, it's more of like a, a mindset that you get into. So let me grab my horn and I'll play a couple things for you. The last movement of Sibelius's second symphony starts like this. And if you don't play that with conviction, you're gonna be in trouble. It's a great excerpt to practice, having to come in on that high note and then really just pin it and go for it. I think including stuff like that in your practice is super helpful for developing this idea of conviction. The other example I thought of was all the little fanfares in Mahler's first symphony, particularly something like this. really just have to dive in to the excerpt without a whole lot of hesitation. In fact, none would be best. So if you're someone who struggles with conviction or the idea of just kind of going for it, uh, revert back to many of the things I talked about in those nine steps to get yourself to that point, maybe accepting some of your nervousness, maybe doing some big breathing here, maybe focusing on the back of the mouthpiece. There's so many things you can do that could aid in you really playing through something without any fears at all. All right, well, thanks for watching everybody and stay tuned for day 11 coming up tomorrow. Bye.
Thank you.